All right, well. Ugh. If there are uh, if there are any lawyers out there that specialize in defamation stuff, you might want to go ahead and uh, send an email to Rolo because I still haven't gotten any papers yet. Why isn't this motherfucker sued me? Send him an email. Offer some services, okay? Passage of time. Right? The significance of the passage of time. Kosher salt, fresh ground pepper. Um, maybe chop up a little thyme. You could also chop up, but not with the thyme, just the salt and pepper. Mix that up also with some thyme. You could even do a little rosemary if you the want. The context of all in which you live and what came before you, based with butter. Yes, hi. You think you. What, can somebody link me to this coconut tree quote thing? Why everybody makes a huge deal out of it? Everything is in context. My mother used to. She would give us a hard time sometimes, and she would say to us, "I don't know what's wrong with you, young people. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you." So all of this is part of the work of this group of extraordinary leaders who will help inform and advise how we think about our work. Everything is in context. My mother used to, she would give us a hard time sometimes and she would say to us, I don't know what's wrong with you young people. I, it seems fine or am I missing something or? Also, holy bros, <laughs> do you know who this guy is? Um. Close. Have we watched this guy on stream before? So this guy is like a, um, he would do, uh, I think he would like take popular criminal cases and he would like say, oh, from a psychology point of view, this person could be exhibiting symptoms of BPD or, um, or whatever. And he, he'll like, he'll go through like popular figures sometimes like, oh, Jordan Peterson, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> John Benet Ramsey, murder, you know, I didn't realize it, but, um, I mean, I didn't realize Close it, I don't watch this guy. Apparently this guy is like a full on uh, right wing grifter now. <laughs> he just makes videos like slurping right leading people and like just shitting on left leading people. <laughs> oh, this is <laughs> this video. I watched this last night. This is unhinged. He just starts like reading a bunch of Kamala quotes, and they're not even like really that bad. But he's like reading them, and he's like, "Oh, clearly she's exhibiting an inability to put together coherent thought." And I'm like, "Wait, what the fuck?" Jason Harper, uh, how knowledgeable are you on Kamala and her background? Would it be worth spending time looking into her history? Does that matter this way? I don't really care that much, uh, but I don't know any of her background. Like, it, isn't she, like, fucking ho from Hawaii or some shit? Or her parents are from Jamaica? I have no idea. I don't know fuck all about her. When referring to a Supreme Court decision, Kamala said, I think of this moment as a moment that is about great momentum. Offering words of wisdom about high-speed internet, she stated... The governor and I, we were all doing a tour of the library here and talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time when we think about a day in the life 
of our children. During a talk in France, Kamala <laughs> said, we must together. He spends like three minutes just like reading the quotes. And I'm like, okay, I mean, like these could, I, I mean, it's a lot different when people are speaking versus when you're just reading it off a of paper. But yeah, it's just, it's such a bizarro video. Get to go and need to be able to get where you need to go to do right. Kamala is frequently repetitive, but delivers her speeches as if she is saying something profound. Maybe she believes that by being the vice president, anything that she says is automatically amazing. People should be dazzled by her statements, like there is no actual work necessary. Other politicians throughout history who have delivered memorable quotes must have done so simply because they were politicians. Kamala doesn't understand how thought leads to coherent statements. Thinking is actually important, and one could argue necessary. Even though many of her statements are nonsensical, simplistic, and confusing, Kamala has never apologized. She appears to have a lack of insight. If Kamala is elected president, she will be in a position of speaking for the nation. Even people who do not value precision communication may be frightened by this prospect. This brings me to item number three. As I mentioned, supporters of Kamala Harris believe that her opponents are overly critical regarding her speaking style. Who is correct in this debate? Do people have the right to criticize someone who wants to be the president for speaking incoherently? In my opinion, yes. The problem with Kamala's speaking style is significant. It's not like her critics are pointing out something common like disfluencies or occasionally losing a train of thought. Kamala is speaking in circles and then expecting people to understand what she is saying. This is worrisome considering how a president must be able to communicate clearly. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that she is a terrible person or worse than Donald Trump. Rather, just that it is legitimate to criticize a person's speaking style when they are running for a job that is heavily dependent on communication. If Donald Trump had the same weakness, he would be criticized for it as well. <laughs> what is this? I don't understand. Yeah, I just had no idea. I just started watching this video. I'm like, oh, interesting. I remember this guy used to like analyze serial killers and he's like a full on like right wing grifter sellout, dude. The fuck? Read the Snopes thing. Oh, this is Dr. Wait, what Snopes thing? What is this? Top 0.01% Twitch are flexing on her bank account balance. She Discord messages me, do you have 100K in your bank account? And I fucking, like, laughed. I, I fucking laughed because... I'll show you guys right now <laughs> why I laughed and like I said it out loud. I was like, that is cr that is so funny that you should like that you built this up and you like secretly messaged it messaged it to me so that it wouldn't leak and stuff. Let me show you what how much I have in my bank account. Bazed. <laughs> Uh, that's called keeping all of your money okay active and working for you at any point in time. Money in your bank account is stupid and. The most important part of every single startup, entrepreneurship, early business is OPM, okay? Other people's money. You should be making other people's money work for you. And what better way to do that than by having a negative checking account balance? Make the bank pay for you. Make the bank buy your coffee, all right? Sometimes you gotta spend money to make money. <laughs> and I was like, I no. So the answer is no. I don't have 100k in my bank account. <laughs> I'm I'm not overdrafted anymore. I have $9 in there now. This was from that day when I found out that I had that I was overdrafted. But I found out and I refilled it and now I have Why she have in your spending account? <laughs> Way too much. I always get I always get scared that I'm going to like I don't know what I'm scared of right now. I keep thinking like I have to pay taxes, but it's not really like, 
nine months. You're right. You know what? We should. I should just shoot this over to my Vanguard account. Thank you. Good question. Don't you pay taxes quarterly? Fuck that. All right. Here, we, what's our next meme by? Boom. Let's go. Is there a, is there like a? I don't think I'm like rich rich, but do you think there's like bank accounts for like rich people, like decently rich people? Because I feel kind of weird using Wells Fargo. There's got to be like. Charles Schwab or Goldman Sachs <laughs> checking accounts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, let's check. Let's check in the vanguards. Just do Nvidia again. God, I should have sold. I think I should have sold. I need to do like a. Um, I need to do a short term like capital gains calculation or something. But that Nvidia stock that I had appreciated, I think it was twenty percent in two weeks. And it was a 500k buy, so it's like a hundred thousand dollars in two weeks. If I sell immediately and then I immediately reinvest in, um, in like S&P 500 ETFs, whatever money I lose to short term to sell, I'm probably regaining at least as it appreciates in whatever other investment fund, right? I feel like there was no reason not to just trash, not trash, I'm sorry, not to sell off that immediately, no? I don't even know what it's worth now. Hold on. You should be shopping around for banks since banks, probably a decent amount of banks would want you as a client. I don't think so. I just, I'll never keep more than like a million of my Wells Fargo. So it's not like they're like making billions of dollars off of my deposits. That sounded really out of touch. I'm sorry. Trump admin psyoping a satanic panic through QAnon. Two minute math analysis clip is the only video on my vid tab the only damon nickel why oh you again stop stop donating to me you need to take your medication stop donating to me and take medication you have psychosis but you don't actually have psychosis i'm talking to you and only you and the only way you're ever going to break through is if you donate the rest of your bank to me don't ever forget it i'm talking to you and only you dave nickel only you I only tell you to take your medication so that nobody else in chat knows that you and I are communicating only to each other. But seriously, take your medication. Oh, I just looked at another thing. I thought I lost so much money on this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus. See, now it's only up 36K. I don't even know. If, if that stock is down in a year, I'm going to hate myself. That'll be my first big fuck up. NVIDIA. Where is it going to be nine months from now? Okay, but I need to buy something else. Okay. Whew, are we gonna, we're going to juggle two meme buys at a time. Give me a stock. Give me a stock. I'm, actually, I'm not doing that. Never mind. I'm sorry. We restrict ourselves to one minute of time. I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that. <laughs> How much did you lose on Biden? I think I had two or three K in, right? <laughs> Rip fucking Biden. Fuck me hard. Fuck you, Biden. Cuck. CrowdStrike? Is CrowdStrike publicly traded? Oh, oh, shit. Cake. Cake said it was going to be here. He said this is a big-ass company. Should I do it? Hold on. Wait. If a company goes bankrupt, do you lose everything, or do they buy you out for, like, a fraction? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I see it. Oh my God, I can see the, I see it, I see it. Oh 
Oh my God, I see it. It's too big to fail. Fortune 500 companies do not switch over legs overnight. <laughs> oh, market cap 66 point. This is a big company. PE ratio 514. That looks right. That's a big number. That's good. Oh my God. I'm doing it. Cake, if. <laughs> All right. If this company goes under, I'm, I am firing you. Just letting you know. Good luck. Let's fucking, let's fucking go. This is my first stupid investment ever. Brokerage, yes. Let me buy with an instant deposit Vanguard. I've earned that much from you, okay? Should you install CrowdStrike? I don't even know what the fuck a CrowdStrike is, okay? All I know is it's, I'm, about to go to the, I'm about to go to the moon with it. Buy. What's the ticker for this? CRWD. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Cake. You're sure they're going to be here, right? <laughs> Cake. I mean, that right. is, that is unbelievable. I, he's, he is saving democracy by stepping you. Okay, we're flipping a coin. Heads, we pull the trigger. Tails, we don't. Let's fucking go. Coin flip. Heads, yes. Tails, no. Heads, yes. Tails, no. Fuck it. Let's fucking go. Submit order. Let's fucking go! Let's go. Hell yes. How much are we buying? 1,827 shares. Okay. Let's do it. Let's let's fucking go, okay? Good luck. I do support this company. I'm a I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer in CrowdStrike Holdings, guys. The way that these guys protect your kernels from intruders, the way that these guys protect your Do you know what kind of kernel level integration this firmware has? Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea? You think people are just going to change their kernels in one day? Do you know how hard that is?
<laughs> Finally. A good Nate Silver tweet. It's been too long. Kamala Harris should murder a goat on live television, therefore unlocking both the ritual sacrifice and the significant domestic policy accomplishment keys. Yes. You didn't even do research. They're getting acquired in two months. Good. That means I get paid out, right? I just want to, just from the bottom of my heart, okay, from the bottom of my heart, I just want you to know, okay, if you're a conservative fan in my audience, all right, if you're a firefighter, if you go to a rally, if you think, I can't believe destiny hates me more than any other person, I just want you to know that that is not true. There's one group of people that I hate more than you, and it's the retards that had fucking Twitter stock when the dipshit Elon bought it for like $45 a fucking share unbelievable if you made money in that you should feel bad you are retarded you're worse than a crypto bro you didn't deserve that payout unfucking believable that you got paid on that horribly fucking retarded elon buy you are the recipient to russian blood money you should feel disgusted with yourself you should have printed that money at an atm and set it on fire that was disgusting absolutely disgusting my god Unbelievable. <sighs> Much like Boogie, we need proof of the buy. I don't have to prove my buys to you. Go talk to fucking, um, aren't the, <laughs> are the order books public? I have no idea, actually. Dear, I don't know if I can actually paste this. Or, well, hold on. I mean, I could just like make up the, if I really wanted to, I would just make up the, um, the HTML or whatever, right? Hold on. Bro, I'm already up. I've already made money. I should just sell this stock right now. Hold on, sorry. Here, this is all the proof you're getting. We're, we're already up $1,000, baby. <laughs> That's the easiest $1,000 I've ever been in my life. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Oh, actually, my NVIDIA is right beneath it. Don't ever buy individual stocks, by the way. Even I, this is like too large of a percentage of my portfolio. I should not have this. And there's my NVIDIA that was worth $70,000 uh, uh, or 70000 more a month ago. And I didn't sell it because of the short-term capital gains tax. I think I should have just sold it and bought something else, but whatever. These are my meme stocks. These are my meme children, okay? And I will... They will foster me into a new age of wealth, and then I will stop streaming forever. Okay, somebody said, Destiny, how does this work with Twitter stockholders getting paid when they went private? Um, when you buy a stock, what you're really buying is a share, a percentage of ownership in the company, right? So when a company is I don't know this 100%, but when a company is publicly traded, I think that means that they make available to all the major stock exchanges the, uh, uh, the ability for people to buy and sell shares of that company. If I want to purchase a company uh, and then I want to take that company private, I don't actually know the whole process, the paperwork and the legal process for it, but if I want to take a company private, private means that it's no longer open for public purchasing and selling of 
stock of shares of the company. So if you own 100 shares of a company and then somebody else buys that company and then they take it private, they have to buy you out for whatever a percentage of the ownership you have of the company of the uh, total purchase of the company. So like, let's say that there's a, let's say that there's a company that has like a hundred shares and it's worth a hundred dollars. Okay. And then let's say I have 20 shares of stock of that company. Let's say somebody else comes in and they buy that company. They're like, okay, I'm going to buy it for 200 bucks. So what will happen is, is they'll, um, if I have 20 shares of the company that I bought for $20 and then they buy the company out for 200 bucks, I would get $40 because they would buy out. They would, I'd have to sell my shares as part of the agreement that you make when you buy and sell stock that I, I think if somebody, if a private seller or private buyer buys it, do they also get the right to purchase your stocks? All of this is a bit more complicated because there's different classes of shares and there's different whatever, but broadly speaking, that's. How about your Anheuser-Busch stock? Uh, I think I did do something on that, but I sold that and cashed out on an S&P 500 ETFs a while ago. What is the benefit of privating a company that's publicly traded? Um, if you, I don't know enough about, I don't think I know enough about company structure to answer that well. The reason why you take a company public, I think, is usually because you've reached a certain size and now you can get external investment from the market. Um, rather than having to go and appeal to individual investors, there's also going to be, um, there's also going to be like, you have to publish documents relating to the performance of your company in a publicly traded company that you don't have to for a privately traded company. Um, but why would you take it private again? I'm not sure. I don't know, actually. Shareholders can't hold you accountable when there are none or only few. Is that true though? Like, let's say that you have a private company, you've got like 50 different investors. If you were to intentionally tank the company, couldn't those investors sue you? You want control, you don't want the legal and uh, cost of maintaining a public company. Shareholder accountability is much more public. Do you, are there boards for private companies? Couldn't there theoretically be a board or no? There must be. Yeah, of course. I think you can have, right? Can a private company have a board of directors? Well, no, because a board, a board represents shareholders and stuff, right? Is it exclusively to represent shareholders or can a board... I guess, a I guess if you're a private company with a decent amount of private investors, you could have a board that represents their interests, maybe. Yeah. Yo. Hi, what's up? Yeah, private companies have, can have boards. You, you still have shareholders in a private company. They're just not. The only difference is that the public people can't buy it. That's yeah. Why would, you, why would you take a... Give me a couple of reasons why you think you would take a company uh, private if it's already been public, besides like filing, like having public filings. Um... Why would you take a company like private? what? Like what? Did, like what did Elon have to gain from taking Twitter and making it private? What was what's the point? Um, well, it becomes your company, right? As opposed to um, having to share it with someone else. So if the value goes up exponentially, you're the one who solely benefits versus someone else. You don't have to have certain oh, levels of account. Wait, wait, hold on. For every single publicly traded company, all of these lack a fifty-one percent owner. Huh? Is that true or? I don't know if that's true, but I do know there's a tremendous amount of reporting and regulation that you have to do when you're a public company that you don't when you're when you're public. Um, well, sure. Yeah, I understand that. I know there's a public filings. Oh, no. They, oh, then wait. Well, yeah, I just I don't understand why you would take. Well, I mean, the, the amount. Let me put it this way. I think to be a public company, like let's just say you're an OTC shitter um, garbage company that does nothing but say that you're public on the pink sheets. It's probably about a million dollars a year just to keep that status for someone like Twitter to remain as a back as they were a public company was probably tens of millions of dollars a year to remain compliant, uh, being public at that level. It's constant audits. It's constant, um, sec 
uh, involvement. Um, it, there's a million reasons why it sucks to be public. The, the good part about being public is you get access to capital from the markets. You can say, hey, I'm going to do an offering. We're going to sell a million shares at, you know, $25 pop. And there, boom, you just pulled in $25 million. You didn't really have to do anything. You just did a share offering. You can't really do that with a private company. You have to like go and talk to the investors and your existing company and hope that they want to put in money. Public, you can just put it out there and have John Q. dipshit buy the shares. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, a tremendous amount of regulation. Um, and... Uh, probably some limit limitations on what you can and can't do as well, right? Like when you can't, sh like as a private company, you can shit post on Twitter, to say whatever you want to say. It's a public company. You obviously can't. There's like, I think, I think you can theoretically do the same. There's probably, it's going to be a bit more stringent if you're publicly traded versus privately traded, right? Like if it was well, a private I, company and I had like 10 investors and I were to just go on Twitter and start tanking the value of my private company or some bullshit, like I'm sure that those people would probably want to sue me, right? Um, yeah, you have, well, as a private company, you still have a fiduciary duty yeah. as the CEO to your, to your, well, I mean, it, it depends, but yeah, usually to your investors you have, if you have investors, you might not, you might just own it yourself and then you can do whatever the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. That might be the case of Musk. He might not have investors. He might just, I think he just owes, owes money on the loans, but they not, they may not be investors. They may, they be, um, just debt holders, which has zero rights, if that makes sense to you. So he's responsible to no one. He can go tomorrow and say, I hate Twitter and I'm going to burn it to the ground and have no one hold him accountable. Well, sure. But I mean, like, even as a private company, like you said, you can still issue equity or stock, right? Yep. But those people in that cases may not have, I mean, I guess you could say they maybe have a case, but it's hard to say. Um, maybe yeah. I'm dumb, but don't you only get to raise capital the first time and after that money goes between private shareholders? Um, I, it's probably done by votes of the board, but if a company's public, um, you have the opportunity or the ability to issue more stock. But I think doing so always dilutes um, your lowest tranche of shares or whatever, or your lowest classification of shares. But a company has the ability to issue more stock if they want. Well, everyone gets diluted, usually. Um, well, yeah, but like I, I think I think there are some, there could be like protected tranches or whatever, can't there or no? I don't know if it's like... No, when, when you issue new equity in a company, everyone gets diluted equally. Uh, what you're thinking about is kind of like Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> shit, who had a different class of shares that gave him more voting rights, but it did not change his ownership in the company. So when a new employee comes on and they're like, hey, we're going to give you a bunch of shares as a signing bonus, and then you get this much a year, that dilutes everyone equally because you've, you've created more shares in a company. Uh, so if, if you had a million shares in the company and now there's a million Wait, you really shares. couldn't you couldn't break a company into like two classes of shares, one that gives you 20% ownership, one that gives you 80% ownership, and then just dilute only the 80% ownership classes? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, I have no idea. Maybe. I, I know you can do it for voting rights, but I don't think that you can do that where one person has a... You can certainly do agreements where a person has uh, a document saying that they have a consistent um, right to continue staying at their level of equity, like with future purchases. Like, for instance, uh, uh, I forget what that's called. It's a it's a legal thing. Back in the day, it used to be common with like uh, fucking over entrepreneurs. But like if I invested money in your company, I get to have rights in there to maintain my equity stake at that same amount by any future raise you do. I would have the right to be able to go and invest again at whatever the current terms is, meaning I can always stay at 20%, if that makes sense. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> is every single person that works at GameStop, all of those people should be like fucking billionaires or some bullshit, right? Like that company should you have mean been the issuing fucking retail employees or the no, 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 no. The people that own stock, that company should have been like issuing new stock like crazy when the price was massively inflated. Right. Did they do that? They must have. Um, they, they sold a fuck ton of stock. Yeah. And the, and the shareholders are not pleased with that either. Um, yeah, they're, they're, the shareholders are not pleased with that fact. Um, but you know, what are you going to do? Get fucked, I guess. <laughs> oh, hold on. Four more emails, guys. We're doing a good job today. 
the fuck is this? Okay. Point of view of a doctor and suggestion on a meta research stream. What is this about? According to this, Musk on 79% of Twitter. Gotcha. say that the MD course I did at my university uses a different methodology in teaching that improves your ability to find the information for the problem you have in your clinical practice. It's called PBL, problem-based learning. Where's KKMD? Is this true? Oh, we had one other guy in chat who wanted a doctor flare as well. I don't know where they're at. <clears throat> because of that, if you're interested, I would be interested too in doing a research stream on how to better research. Oh, this actually sounds interesting. Yeah, sure. Do you have Discord? If you were a president, who in your orbit would you choose as VP? Good question. Jenk wants an open convention? We know. Didn't the Saudis have to finance for a purpose? Um, Saudi Arabia kind of did. I think N. Cutter did as well, yeah. All right. Well, how's when, your when day you are, today? What? Oh, God. It's fine. When, when you're arguing about the Twitter stuff, are you saying that um, the Twitter board should have denied Musk's offer out of the good for humanity? When did it, wait, what? When Musk acquired Twitter, do you think that they should have not taken the offer? No. What? How? I would have, no, they would have gotten assassinated. <laughs> that offer was insane, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was just I was just checking. It seemed like you're like, oh, they're blood money on their hands type of thing. Maybe I misunderstood that. No, I was ranting at the retarded fucking losers that were holding stock. They got they made out like crazy. What was it trading for? Like, wasn't it trading for like twenty five dollars a share, and you ended up getting cashed out at like forty five a share? Went once the sale went through. It was insane, wasn't it? Uh, I don't. Was the difference that much? I know as soon as Musk made the offer, the price went near to his amount. Yeah. There was a little bit of a delta because people thought because there people might didn't be a know if it would go through or not. Yeah, right. It was like thirty a share, and they cashed out at fifty four twenty. Yeah, fuck that. Unbelievable, disgusting, financial cuckoldry. Do you think, man? Maybe Twitter should have been um, a public benefit corporation. And then they would have had more um, flexibility in, in not accepting an offer like that, maybe. I mean, that's kind of what people argue for a lot of social media, that there should be some like public aspect attached to it, right? Yeah, maybe. It is kind of wacky if you think about it, that like, wait, does Zuckerberg doesn't own over half of Facebook, does he? No. Um. Wait, who the fuck else is there? It's Facebook, Twitter, and who else? Wait, is that for it? What? So, for social media? Yeah. Um, Instagram, <laughs> which is Facebook. Instagram is WhatsApp, Facebook. Telegram. WhatsApp I guess you is can Facebook count. now, isn't it? Yeah, Telegram. Te no, Telegram isn't um, social media that much. Telegram is social media in a lot of other countries. In the United WhatsApp States, Telegram is like one media. one thousandth the size of oh YouTube, I guess. T did TikTok is TikTok forced to sell? Did that actually happen? I think it's still in litigation or whatever. I mean, I know that my fucking kids are still using TikTok, so mm -hmm. obviously that's not done for.
Facebook isn't even big because of the U.S. market anymore. Yeah, fa- I don't know, dude. I try to go on my Facebook and it's just fucking depressing. <laughs> but maybe there's like oh. stuff happening on Facebook. I don't know. It's just like a bunch of people now that are all complaining about like health problems or divorces or people dying or I don't know. It's just depressing as fuck. I don't know if that's just like millennial Facebook or older people or. Can I ask? And I think we did talk about this a little bit before, but I am curious. Why is Facebook not being like, all right, guys, we're just going to make a clone of Twitter. That's it. And they did put a lot of. No, they didn't. They made a very shitty version of Twitter that um, like a horrible version of Twitter that it, it's like, I think initially, like you couldn't even really subscribe to people like you had to follow a thread or something along those lines. It was not good. OK, my I'm understanding saying, from what I saw is threads is basically a copy paste of Twitter. Yeah, it's not. OK. I think the only issue Threads had, or the biggest issue that Threads had, was that there was no um, desktop version. I can't even believe I'm saying that. Desktop version. There's not like a website for it, but... Well, that was a big version, or a big issue with it. But yeah. I think the other thing is, it wasn't, like, following-based. Like, I forget... Fuck, someone who's, who actually uses Threads, and this is part of the problem. Oh my god, wait, they do have a desktop version now. Yeah, they do now, yeah. Bayzed. But it's not it's not the same as Twitter though. It's like different. It's like you you don't follow um fuck me. Do I have to pull it up? I mean, I can click follow on accounts. I don't know what you mean. Um it's Where are the DGGers who will just tell me what I'm what I'm trying to say in a less old voice? Hold on. Okay, first of all, yeah. it's connected to our Facebooks, right? That's a problem. I don't know if it's connected to your Facebooks. I think it is to your Instagram account, though, yeah. Um, I had to do it with Facebook. Okay. You know what? Maybe they've changed it a little bit here. It is looking a little bit more Twitter clone-like now. Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, as I browse my feed, all of these posts are from 2023. That is not a good look when I'm following apparently like 70 people here. That is, uh, oh, not good. When you go to threads.net slash following, how many people do you, like how recent is the content that you see? Threads.net? Yeah, it's threads.net slash following. I just see me. I only see two posts, mine. You went to slash following? Yep. Oh, maybe you're not following me. I'm not. There you go. Wow. Well, anyways, I, I guess it sucks that a normal, there isn't a normal Twitter anymore. Yeah. 
Ah, fuck, I gotta go. Be careful, I love you. Um, did I end up buying a new car? Nope. I didn't. I did not. Did you ever check out Blue Sky? Yeah, once Twitter got bought, a whole bunch of threads, Blue Sky, Mastodon, a bunch of other things kind of came up, but for some reason they all kind of sucked. One of the biggest issues with online stuff is, um... Oh my god. Wait, I just got the... I just got the best idea ever. I think. <clears throat> okay, wait. Cake's not here, is he? Because he's going to get fucking triggered. Why doesn't the... Um, I feel like the government should run a server that has accounts for every citizen. It could be a government authenticated server tied to your social security information or whatever. And you should be able to OAuth from that server into other services so that you know you have a unique American visitor. Holy shit. Other countries have this? Oh, shit. You mean like Sweden, Finland, Denmark? Can you, is that true? Oh, that'd be based. Can we add this to DGG? Login.gov developers. I want to go on the non-anonymous internet. <laughs> Somebody can make internet too. Hell yes. Um, <clears throat> okay, what's going on with this fucking, catch me up with this shit. Should, should people be mad about this or I can never tell anytime children are involved, I can never tell if it's like actually bad shit or if it's just people being autistic. Give me the best summary video of this. Does Tom have a. Is it. This. Okay. Jamari. Good luck. So recently, Mr. Beast became the most subscribed to person on the entire platform. Year after year, he has consistently dropped some of the biggest videos on YouTube, and he's the type of guy that really prides himself on avoiding any sort of controversy around his name. And in general, it seems like he really just wants to have fun while helping people out and making these different big ideas of his come to life. But one controversial topic around I feel like there are three ways that you can engage with, like, family-friendly people. Two of them are fine, and one of them is incredibly fucking cringe. The first way is, like, fans would, where you see it, and it's like, oh, this is, like, a family-friendly account. We can engage with it. There's no swear words, whatever. You know, I'm a fan of this account. Um, the second way is, like, I guess how I would engage with it. I kind of think this, when they're, like, very friendly and they're very... Um, they try to be very palatable to everybody. It's a little cringe and it's like, okay, whatever. This is like a very like corporate say, very family friendly account, whatever. So I just, I don't care as much. And then there's like the third way, which is ultra omega cringe, which is this account, this is family friendly. I know the guy is actually secretly super fucking evil that I'm just spending my whole fucking life trying to convince everybody else. This is a family friendly account is actually super fucking evil. Did you know Taylor Swift and Mr. Beast and all these people actually fucking the most evil? It's like, okay, bro. 
and Tim and his brand has been one of his best friends Chris. Chris has been with Jimmy since the start of his days on YouTube and is actually one of his childhood friends. And over time, the audience came to know and love Chris like they do many of the other recurring people on the channel. Well, you might remember last year we talked about Chris in a highly controversial video posted by Sunny V2, and the main topic being discussed in this video was Chris becoming, well, Chris with a K, and transitioning from a man to a woman. Needless to- Wait, did he change her name to, from Chris to Chris? Is that real? That was pretty fucking memes if that's true, but okay. To say the reception for this video was really all over the place. Over the years, people had come to know Chris as a married Christian family man, so many fans and critics alike did find his transition to be a little bit jarring including Nick Merckx, who has been very vocal about his opinions. Now, Mr. Beast has made it beyond clear that Chris is his day one best friend, and he will always support him, even expressing displeasure towards people who had bad things to say about Chris, and claiming that he is an amazing parent. Even till this day, it's like constantly a huge topic of discussion online, because not only is it such a hot topic in general, but he's also involved with the biggest YouTuber in the world. And now Chris is once again being discussed, and it seems like their past is coming back to haunt them in the form of some strange tweets. Above that, there's also some more recent allegations that point towards Chris having a Dr. Disrespect type of relationship with a fan. First, let's talk about this video that recently came out and now went viral that shows old tweets from Chris back in the 2017 to 2018 range. This video immediately connects Chris with a person named Shadman, who is known for his explicit drawings online, and he apparently got famous for depicting all kinds of disgusting things in these drawings, including underage individuals in these illustrations doing vile things. Like anyone who thinks this stuff is okay needs to be thrown under the jail with the likes of EDP. Basically, weirdos use this art angle as a bypass to enjoy though the Chadman draws a lolly con, basically. He made a very, very, very beautiful picture of me when we were fighting with all the uh, animators. Oh, it was this one. Found it. Very talented artist. I am now a paraplegic after this drawing. Twenty seventeen, Jesus. Long time ago. Why the cuck thing before Molina? Wait. Oh, I think back then, I think cuck was just kind of a more general insult. Well, I feel like I remember hearing um, Sargon and them use this a lot. But it became, it became, the cuck stuff became more, back then I think you just kind of like called everybody a cuck because it was whatever. But then when the red pill stuff came in, people started to get like super obsessed with like the, um, the cuck hunting stuff. Yeah, there was like a lib cuck and everything. But I think even from 2016 onwards, I think the uh, Gamergate stuff, people would do it. The legality of it does- More of a Chad versus Cuck thing, yeah. Still seem kind of vague to me. 
Well, basically, back in the day, Chris posted a ton about Shadman, and even had his artwork up at his house in the background of an old Mr. Beast video. He also posted several tweets about enjoying this type of artwork in general, and other suggestive posts about various cartoon characters, type of artwork of an old Mr. Beast video. He also posted several tweets about enjoying How, what's this person's name? How old is Chris, Mr. B? I was hoping it was... Oh, wait, Tyson. <sighs> okay. They're 28 years old. And then these tweets are from 2016. It's about eight years ago. So they're like 2020... I don't give a fuck. Fuck me. I... <laughs> I don't care. Okay, so there's jerking it to some lolly, all right. ...this type of artwork in general, and other suggestive posts about various cartoon characters. And even though most of these posts are like seven years old at this point, at the time he was still a 21 year old man. And this isn't just like some racist stuff or something that there could be like more gray area on. Or you could say, oh, that was just like part of the times back then. This is some weird shit that he was interested in to a massive extent. Like a grown man hanging a picture on their wall of this nasty stuff takes quite a bit of premeditated thought. So obviously people already thought that that was very strange of him, but it's really nothing compared to this more damning allegation, where people are claiming to have exposed Chris for having an inappropriate relationship with a 13 year old fan when he was 20 years old and that this online communication continued for several years. Shout out to this man Prism, who is the first one to bring this to light. So there's this kid who goes by the nickname Lava GS Online, and it seems like he was a massive Mr. Beast fan back in the day, and even got to work for Jimmy at some point in the past helping with his gaming channel. It seemed like over the years they developed several channels of communication from Snapchat to Twitter messages, Discord DMs, and private gaming sessions. Which let me just pause the video right there and say that I already have a problem with that. Unless someone is like your cousin or related to you in some way, there is absolutely no reason that a 20 year old needs to be having all these different private conversations with someone who's in middle school. Like a 20 year old should be out there enjoying their life, trying Wait, nothing compared on. to this more damning allegation. Where people are claiming to have exposed Chris for having an inappropriate relationship with a 13 year old fan when he was 20 years old. And that this online communication continued for several years. Shout out to this man Prism who is the first one to bring this to light. So there's this kid who goes by the nickname Lava GS Online. And it seems like he was a massive Mr. Beast fan back in the the day and even got to work for Jimmy at some okay some point in the past helping with his gaming channel it seemed like over the years they developed several channels of communication from snapchat to twitter messages channel yeah. it seemed like over the years they developed several channels of communication from snapchat okay snap chat to hold fuck me hold snapchat. on okay wait just to be clear Fuck me, dude. I suck at Snapchat. I've used this. I barely use this app. But is this, if the name is in the top, doesn't this mean it's just a story? Am I wrong? Or hold on. I hate this fucking app. I, it's legitimately, I don't know why anybody uses it. Oh, and I don't even know how to find anything. Cause when I swipe in a direction, it brings up my camera. I don't know anything. Destiny. No, pretty sure that's a DM. That means it's sent by. How do I even look at, oh, okay, I see. No, I don't. I don't know how to, f oh wait, the people button down here? No, nope, these are, oh, okay. Oh no, if it's a story, it'll have a bar at the top. Okay, never mind. Jesus chat to twitter messages discord dms and private gaming sessions which let me just pause the video right there and say that i already have a problem with that unless someone is like your cousin or related to you in some way there is absolutely no reason that a 20 year old needs to be having all these different private conversations with someone who's in middle school well the, i mean the only exception i could see is if because it's saying here it makes it sound like they have some kind of working relationship. Chris Jamie on Twitter asked me to come help him on Beast Stream. Was he working for him or I Discord know, okay, DMs and private gaming sessions? Which let me just pause the video right there and say that I already have a problem with that. Unless someone is like your cousin or related to you in some way, there is absolutely no reason. I see on Twitter. Yes, we'll look at it afterwards. Yes. 
suspects and that a 20 year old needs to be having all these different private conversations with someone who's in middle school. Like a 20 year old should be out there enjoying their life, trying to do new things with people their age. And obviously pretty much anyone with a platform online is going to have some fans who are kids. And so it's obviously the adult's responsibility to not be in like constant communication with them. It's really not that hard. Either way, he felt so comfortable with Chris Wait. to the point to not be in like the platform online is going to have some fans who are kids. And so it's obviously the adult's responsibility to not be in like constant communication with them. It's really not that hard. Either way, he felt so comfortable with Chris to the point that he was asking him about his addiction to adult cartoons and they were having a lot Lot of inappropriate banter publicly on Twitter when Lava was only 14. Guys, we are so close to our goal. Oh my god, one more Patreon and I'm releasing my nudes. And this is the part I have a problem with. This isn't a group chat. This is literally just him and this other guy that he's been talking to and that he's friends with online. Lava says, I'm your first Patreon, big boy. And, and uh, he shows that he donated some money. He donated like a dollar or something. So it's not enough to meet the goal. And he says, but not five dollars. Pathetic, just kidding, kissy face. I'll tell you what it means. It means that you are telling him that he needs to donate five dollars so you can release your or whatever. He says, wait till my Twitch revenue comes in, winky face. And of course, it continues. He says, check again, and he, he tags you, I think. At least that must be you, or he's tagging you. And of course, he says, I posted some fire news for you. Please no share. And this is someone that you're talking to that is 14 years old, that you know is 14. And at the end of the day, you cannot be talking about topics like this with someone that is this young. So at the very least, these two had a close enough relationship where Chris felt comfortable making these adult jokes towards him. And at the very worst, he's literally flirting with a 14 year old on the timeline. But by the time Lava would turn 16, he would apparently even meet up with Chris at some point. And he even talked about this extensively on like a Mr. Beast Discord server. Now, I do want to make it clear that this guy Prism, who made this video, spoke privately with this Lava guy. And Prism claims that Lava's statement is that nothing bad ever happens when they met up back in the day. And that basically their relationship never really got inappropriate. And as I'm adding this video, guys Lava actually took to Twitter to make his own statement about the situation where he says these videos are massive lies and twisting the truth Ava never did anything wrong and just made a few edgy jokes I was never exploited or taken advantage of can you do me a favor and comment on these videos and tell them to stop spreading lies the situation takes away from children who are actively being exploited every day online I'm not a victim of anything being claimed in these videos or at all and keep in mind that's after this morning he removed all affiliation with Mr. Beast from his Twitter page and now we have yet another update where Keemstar has jumped into the picture he says that Mr. Beast connected him with this guy Lava directly and that Lava is denying all these allegations and now claiming that him and Chris did not have have any sort of private interactions and then when he went to meet up with Chris that apparently his entire family and the Mr. Beast crew were present. I ran Discord with Chris Tyson when I was 13 as the inappropriate jokes were said. That's it. So take with that what you will. And you guys already know if there was going to be one- The victim doesn't care why does anyone because it's because the Chris person is trans so it's like the biggest lightning rod for every fucking possible thing that could ever be you know yeah. person to defend Chris in this entire situation it was going to be that fool Ethan is online who last time we caught up with him was pretty much defending the sick people that they catch on predator poachers. So here he was trying to watch the video on stream where Chris got exposed for like in that very strange artwork. God, I hate how this is formatted like a commentary video and it feels like it was edited by AI. Uh, it also sounds like it's written by fucking AI. So the synopsis is Ava used to like stops giving no because the synopsis of the video is Ava used to like Shadman in 2017. Don't watch that fucking dog shit video. So bad. Such an awful and terribly formatted video. Literally the worst fucking YouTube video I've seen in a long time. So from the start, you can tell that this guy, Ethan, feels some sort of personal connection to the call out in that video. Just like the sheer amount of anger you can see pulsing through his very tired face. To me, kind of tells the whole story of what his opinion is about to be. Yes, that video that he was watching, it wasn't like the best made video I've ever seen, but it's something that I would expect from kind of like a novice commentary channel. And I do think it was very important for kind of kicking off this expose. But let's hear what Ethan thinks. Literally just to be like, Mr. Beast's friend seven years ago had some uh, inappropriate tweets that were a really bad look you're avoiding the video that's the whole point what am i avoiding the truth that it doesn't matter that it happened seven years ago this guy was into some absolutely diabolical shit didn't like most of the internet at the time with shadman yes for some reason yes so his excuse for this disgusting behavior is that apparently most of the internet they were fucking with this nasty loser who was making these disgusting drawings i mean first of all that just has to be a blatant lie and to me the shit he was into is just like inexcusable i don't give a fuck. when it happens he was already an adult man i don't need to see the whole thing it's bad it's a bad video and I think that he's claiming it's a bad video because politically it doesn't align perfectly with him. I'm sorry, it was seven years ago. You know how many times this guy, Ethan, has likely judged people for things that they did more than a decade ago just because they do not align with him politically? Like, that seems to be his whole shtick, is that if you're a conservative because he's very obviously a big-time liberal, well, it's just, you. he's never going to give you the benefit of the doubt. He's going to take your words and misconstrue them. But oh, when it's someone who's on his side of history, well, he's going to ride with them to the very end. I don't want to see it. It's irrelevant. That doesn't make it okay. It's not relevant though. Is that a gross thing to do? Is it unacceptable? Yeah. But like the anti-cancel culture warriors all of a sudden are like, wait, liking tweets from seven years ago. Why are we even talking about Mr. Beast's friend? Because she's Mr. Beast's friend. Yeah, and Mr. Beast has the biggest platform literally in the entire world. Since this time, uh, Chris transitioned and is now Ava. And that's fine, but it doesn't just absolve you of all the nasty shit you were doing before you transitioned. To give you an idea of how fucking long ago this was. Stop being defensive. You follow Chris on Twitter. Dude, 
This was a completely different. This is the guy who helped fabricate super mega false allegations. Who, the guy in the hoodie here or the guy with the bleached hair here? I don't remember. Different time. I was in high school when this happened. I had no idea who Mr. Beast was, and neither did Mr. Beast. The he wasn't even guy. around. What are you saying? I think that the point they're trying to make is that every single time this type of topic comes up, whether it's someone actually like trying to talk to someone who's underage or just having this type of peculiar behavior, you always seem to be on the side where you are literally rushing to defend the person who's just being absolutely disgusting. Are you trying to cancel Mr. Beast too? Because he had that in his living room? It was in Mr. Beast's living room. Should he be canceled too? You can't ever defend Mr. Beast ever again. Don't ever defend him or watch him. Uh, yeah, Mr. Beast doesn't have a bunch of old tweets linking him to this freak and suggesting that he was a massive fan of him. I guarantee you that if Jimmy was doing that shit back in the day, it would have been brought to light long ago and his feet would have been held to the same fire. It shows a bias. Towards what? Towards creeps. Do you want to keep acting like Mr. Beast should be canceled forever or something? No one one time said Mr. Beast should be canceled. You're the only one bringing him up at this point. I mean, everyone really just wants Chris to come out and explain why he was in. What's your take? I I, I don't know. I don't give a fuck. He, he jerked into Lollygon. I don't. I super don't care. I just like one of the things I don't care at all. He talked to minors. Did he say anything inappropriate? He probably shouldn't be. It's a bad idea for a variety of reasons, and you expose yourself to um, potential liability just because people make videos like this. But like, if is there, is there anything bad that actually happened in any of this, or because it seems all like the most boring, stupid shit in the world? to that weird shit uh you should be not be apologetic i'm not apologetic and now you're literally misgendering chris he's probably more upset about that than he is about the core matter here that chris was on some weird shit i mean this guy's brain is so dense it just honestly starts to make me a little bit upset like how can someone be so confident in this way of thinking and just be so wrong you're spelling it the way she changed it to but you're misgendering her so i think that shows that you have a pretty severe bias actually you actually have a bias that leads you outside of reality and away from logic and truth Dude, it has to be one of the most ironic statements I've ever heard in my entire life. Why are you being defensive? Well, you're just changing the complete conversation because you don't have anything to say. Yeah, it's gotta be the most ironic video of all time. Um, listen, Ethan, get some help, bro. As for Chris, we're gonna need some answers. Like, in my opinion, Mr. Beast don't really need to say shit about this. But Chris, like, if you want to continue to have a platform online, you need to explain yourself a little bit. Like, him just wiping his entire Twitter clean, it just does not look very good to me. But y'all let me know what you guys think down below. I will continue to keep y'all updated on this situation. As always, I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like, and subscribing. But as you guys know, it's been your boy, the Tan Superman, and some other internet news out I follow mostly only influential creators here, yet most have been silent about the Chris Tyson situation. Pretty deviant behavior across the board. Weirdo. Can't wait to read some of the cope justifications of why it wasn't addressed. What is, wait, okay, is there other shit that got leaked? What is this? He's no share. And this is someone that you're talking to that is 14 years old, that you know is 14, and at the end of the day, you cannot be talking about topics like this with someone that is this young. Even, even if it's in this joking context, I'm not really sure what the joke is here. Um, but <laughs> Why do people do this? People did this with me with the Courtney joke too. If you don't like a joke, or if you don't think that the thing is appropriate to joke about, then don't, why people like, I don't even know what the joke is. It's pretty obvious what the joke is, right? What do you mean you don't know what the joke is? Now you can say I don't find it funny. Or I don't think it's appropriate. That's fine. But be like, I don't even see what I don't even see what's humorous about this. Just, like, what the fuck? What are you? Some forty-seven-year-old, uh, you know, like Christian pastor? Get the fuck out of here. This is someone. Keep in mind, you're bisexual. Okay, you're talking to. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay, I'm sorry. Church is in session. The fuck? Damn. Came out of left field. A guy that is fourteen and you are in college, and the premise here. A guy? Don't you mean a boy? is you guys are joking with each other about sending nudes. That's illegal. You can't do that. You can't do, you can't joke about it? It's illegal to tell jokes? I'm sorry, I thought this was America. <laughs> what? I know he means it's illegal to send nudes to each other, obviously, but what? what is, yeah, no shit. People joke about doing illegal things? You know, drugs are illegal too in the United States, right? Like. And let me just say it like this, it doesn't matter if, if, if you're joking or not. Solicitation is solicitation. There should be zero discussion about anybody sending anyone who's 14 years old nudes of any kind, okay? I don't know. I'm not quite sure if you sent this guy news or not. For all I know, this, this very well could be a joke. But you were talking inappropriately to a guy who's 14 years old and to a guy who you know is 14 years old, and that's what I have a problem with. What I have a problem with here is the way that you're talking to him, the fact that he's asking you about animated pornography, and this is you're one of your friends with online, which, by the way, you shouldn't even be friends with a middle schooler to begin with because you're in college. You should be going to a bar and trying to meet people or talk to people that are your own age, not to middle schoolers. Like, what, what the hell is wrong with you? That's weird. And right here, look at this. He says, lol, I just saw. Hold up. I got you, dad. So again, he, we, this guy who's 14 is calling him big boy. He's calling, Chris is calling him dad. They're sending kissy faces. They're sending winky faces. And the premises, they're sending, he's sending nudes, basically. And he's telling him to don't, donate more so he can send him nudes. And then he said he sent him nudes. I don't care if you, you're, you're going to say that this is a joke. This dude's 14 years old and you're in college. You shouldn't even be talking to this guy in the first place. It's sick. I mean, it. It's disgusting. It's not okay. It's not okay. I know, I know. Jimmy might come out to defend this kind of behavior. Like maybe you guys joke about sending nudes to 14 year olds. Is this, a, is this guy a griper or is this just like an aesthetic now? It's not okay. It's not okay. Why did he move this? 
I know, I know, Jimmy might come out to defend this kind of behavior. Like, maybe you guys joke about sending nudes to 14 year What was, why did he move that? <laughs> what happened? What's going on in this video? Disgusting. It's not okay. It's not okay. I know, I know, Jimmy might come out to defend this kind of behavior. Like, maybe you guys joke about sending nudes to 14 year olds often. I, I, I don't know if you guys do that. I don't know if you guys joke about sending nudes to 14 year olds Did he often. hit it with his hand a few times? He needs move? Uh, he needs, a. Uh... He needs space to emote. But that happened, and it's right here, and it's still up online. And I gotta say, this is some. Wait a second. Is this background real? Is he real? Is this AI? Really messed up stuff. You should not be talking to a 14 year old this way under any context. You shouldn't be saying it in a joking manner. You shouldn't be saying it in any kind of manner. Because this is someone that you talk to one on one. This is, you shouldn't even be talking to a middle schooler one on one. It's, it's freaking weird. And of course, you have other stuff right here. This is a bad way to hide your hentai. Uh, I don't know, like, what exactly are you discussing with this guy, man? Why is he asking you about hentai so much? Why is he talking about hentai with you? Again, super young. Oh my god. Love how I set up that embed shows you looking sexy. I don't really think he should be calling you sexy, but I get it. He's trying to say it makes you look good. Chris, will you be my Valentine? Thank you, Dad! Exclamation point. Heart. Thanks, Lava. Love ya. And just in case you wanted more proof of this guy talking to him on Discord, here you go. February 7th, 2019. And <laughs> Why did he print these out? <laughs> That's so dramatic. First he's saying Lava's mom tomorrow, and boom. How old will you have been there? Yeah, you would there's no reason to talk about Lolly with 14 year olds. Who would understand Lolly better but a 14 year old? What do you mean? <laughs> been 15 at that time. <laughs> Joke. Even says January 13th, 2019. My friend Lava GS is live on Twitch. Go spam lobster in the chat. Okay, this one here. This one's clearly an edgy meme. It says objectively the easiest way to prevent rape is to start consenting. That's yeah. Just that, that one's any joke. Yeah, right here, the server that he made. Wait, is objectively. The There's not even a minor involved here. It's just an edgy joke. He's just upset about an edgy joke. I guess it kind of boiled down to, is it inappropriate to talk to a minor about fetishes? I mean, like, the very finely, like, thread of the needle answer there is going to depend on how the conversations are being used. Like, if you're getting off to it, it's probably not ethical. But, like, there's going to be a ton of external indicators for whether or not this is, like, in really bad territory or not. So, for instance, if he's making a lot of these jokes privately, um, that's a lot more weird. Because it's like, okay, wait, are you trying to, like, angle this into a an actual sexual conversation? Or, um... But if it's all just like public tweets and shit, I mean, you can argue it's inappropriate if the person's younger, but I, who the fuck, I don't care that much. The easiest way to prevent a rape is to start consenting. That's, yeah, just that, that, that one's any joke. You have right here the server that he made. There's Chris in the server, and it turns out that Jimmy's in the same server as this guy. I don't know when Jimmy started talking to this guy. I know that he was mainly Chris Tyson's friend. Uh, he wasn't really Jimmy's friend, but still, he was also DMing him at one point, but I, I don't think Jimmy was really this guy's friend, so. And here, we're gonna get to the part where he was meeting up with him in person. We're gonna talk about that. So, again, I have no idea. If Why is he moving this all over the table? What is happening with this? He was meeting up with him in person. We're gonna talk about that. So again, I have no idea. If is it like a meme for his videos? Is this like a thing he wants to? This guy, if anything happened to this guy physically? I can only show that they're talking about inappropriate topics with each other. I can show that there is a vast age difference that he should not have been socializing with this guy in the first place, but he did. And the fact that he was able, like the moment he was able to meet up with him, he met up with him in person, which I think is highly inappropriate since he was talking to this guy since he was 13. And he's also attracted to men and the guy's a guy. It's highly <laughs> because he's bought. Just as a quick thing, just as a heads up, I guess, like, straight people can rape people of the same sex, especially children, especially if they're in positions of power with them over long periods of time as well, okay? Don't be, like, mind-fucked by that. Like, oh, it's a straight guy, so he could never rape, uh, you know, this little boy, or this is a straight woman, so she could never rape this little girl. Don't, don't let, don't let your mind, like, fool yourself into thinking that's the case. Inappropriate. The circumstances you showed up in is inappropriate. Here we go. So this one's in Carl's server. Uh -oh. Right here. It's a, it's a Discord messaging. Discord messaging. He said... I love Carl, though. I drove from West Virginia to North Carolina. I'm sitting in a camper in the woods right now. I love Carl, though. So Carl, Carl is amazing, and that is a fact. True. He hugged me before Chris managed to. Carl, sleep. I'm just friends with Carl. I don't need mod. His mod team is already top notch. Why do you want to come to North Carolina? Because winky face, winky face. Carl simps for me. Who doesn't simp for Carl? I think we all simp for Carl. I know, right, TD? Offering to buy me ice cream if I do stuff for him. Why do you want to come to North Carolina? And money. Sneak me away from New York to North Carolina, that's why. Carl simps for me. Who doesn't simp for Carl? Boy, Jedi. My mid lock in Kassadin after the enemy locks in Kasanti Echo Lucian Senna. I take responsibility for racism. <laughs> okay. Chris Tyson for Mr. Beast is far worse than Dr. Disrespect, but the so called influencers. Haven't said a word about it. One, Chris had inappropriate conversation with several minds. Use the N word with the hard R. Whoa! 
provided revenge porn for kids. What? Okay, three. That's a big claim. What's what is that about? Okay, hold on. What's this? We've got Tyson Snapchats to Ava. Or Ava is Tyson, sorry. Whose snap is this? Whose snap who snap is this? Me. To Chris Tyson. Old video with revenge porn of a girl from iCarly. I don't know if you heard about my bathwater prank and how crazy it's gone, but my stock is actually sold out at the moment. Rather than bring it back, I'm actually looking to bottle a whole bath on video into a giant tub and ship it to whoever buys it. I just want to reach out in advance because I know this is the kind of content Mr. Beast does. Just to give you a heads up. Um, let me know if this is something that might interest him. Thanks, Bell. Who's Bell? Is she a minor or? Belle Delphine. What is, was she a minor? Or, or I don't understand. What is this? Who cares about these snaps then? They're just scrolling through Snapchat. I know, dude, I would come inside of that egg and then watch her eat it and then watch her have sex with another man while she comments about how my genitalia can never satisfy her. She gets cancer in the mouth. That's just this Chris guy's being edgy on Discord. I gotta say that is one of the not good places. I, I hope he goes his entire life not smoking a single cigarette, and then when he gets eighty, he just gets fucked with some by some dude with some cancer dick, and he shoves it in his mouth. And he gets yeah, mouth cancer. yeah, <laughs> that's hot. Mouth. Okay. How's it going, you guys? So uh, recently, everybody's been hearing about the Jeanette McCurdy leak of her photo. What the story is? She sent um, pictures to her boyfriend, her now ex-boyfriend, and um, he leaked them out, and um, she is a very popular Nickelodeon star on the show, um, iCarly, and probably be seen as the pulling of the show. It'll probably be taken off the air. Second of all, um, you'll probably see the photos get taken down at some point tonight, maybe tomorrow, because Nickelodeon has that kind of power. But um, the link's in the description if you want to see them. I mean, I'm not endorsing people to go look at somebody else's private business, but I know that, uh, you know, people might want to see them, so there, it's there if you want it. Uh, first off, what I have to say, though, is that when you uh, look on the news, you see people, they've leaked um, nudes from their girlfriend at a high school, and that, little, that girl kills herself. It's a tragic story. Everybody calls the guy a bully. But, um, yeah, when people like Perez Hilton do it, it's considered entertainment, so. <laughs> Why would you link them? You're going to have to think about where the right and wrong is, really. Did he know that she was a minor? Or was she even a minor in these pictures? Or And um, I think it's all wrong, personally. I don't think somebody should leak photos that were sent in trust. But No, she wasn't. I guess if that's how Perez Hilton wants to make his living... It's up to him. You be decide. Yeah, you decide if it's moral. Or he sounds like he's like fucking nineteen years old in this video. Who? If it's immoral. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay. What is this? What? What? He said nigger. Whoa. You do know I'm watching this for ten hours straight on a live stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he said the N word. Well, you just said the N word. But I'm not relevant. Oh, yeah, that's true. I guess you can say the N word. <laughs> what? Text from 2018 between me and Chris. I was 14, he was 22. Me, my friend made a fucking school shooter threat and might give me his skins because he's got it for life. LOL, what the fuck? You for real? Yeah, it was crazy. LOL, did the school expel him? Two kissy things. Of course, dad. This is the best Snapchat I've ever seen. Haha, uh -huh, when it's your wedding, you can do what you want, lol. These are probably the worst texts we've seen, but I mean, like, half of this shit is deleted, so.
I have no idea what you just said 15 seconds ago. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, um, these are probably the worst texts I've seen. Uh, or really, just like, I don't know why you're, like, you're sending kissy faces. But, uh, but like, half the messages are deleted, so I don't know what the... I, I mean, I don't know what I'm supposed to read into this. Okay, we've got Twitter threads. Uh, Valkyrie, who should just never comment on public stuff ever, because everything she says is like the most clueless brain dead shit ever. What is this? Nine hours. Holy Christ. Love is mom tomorrow. Okay. Oh, Destiny doesn't want to be seen as transphobic. Do you ever... I Do you ever have the... Um, when you navigate the world, do you realize like how incompatible the things in your brain might be with the things that exist outside of your perception? Like, is it, do you come into my channel and you're like, oh, he's on the left, and then you just like instantly imagine like 50 million different things in my life because like anything else is inconceivable to you? What's this? <laughs> we can get that going. Oh, this is more about question of the age. I think the age has been confirmed, or has it been confirmed this week? That's funny, right? So that interview, you say you're going to release at some point, is that correct? Or not? Well, I will release it at yeah. some point. Sure, okay. Um, it's, um, so pretty much I, I got those Discord messages from Carl's server. Mm -hmm. And in terms of like, if I had to look up the messages again, because we tried to screen record as much as we could, but we couldn't screen record every single thing because I've been on this for such a long time. And I looked through so many Discord messages. If I saw something that was, you know, noticeable, I'd screenshot it and put it in there and make a note of it. And when it came time to actually like screen record and like actually like, cover all this, all the stuff that's like so far back or so hidden, I wasn't able to screen record all of that, but we, we did the best that we could. We, we did a live stream where we screen recorded, because uh, this is for the second time, we screen recorded all the tweets when they were up, and we also went to the Discord server to find the tweet, or the Discord messages about Camperman. So those are real messages. We have, like, we did a live stream. Okay, um, so one, one thing to point out before we also get to the Camperman stuff in relation to this lava person is, I didn't actually see this, someone just posted on Twitter here. This is their comment about your video. They say, this video is not true and disgusting. Ava Chris has never done anything wrong. Okay. Uh, really identify with Spongebob and because Spongebob's kind of on a spectrum too as a character and uh, this last con that I did in South Texas in McGowan, Texas, it was the first time I'd ever been asked this question of a person who was, you know, obviously on the spectrum uh, came up to me and said, hey, I have a question for you, Tom Kenny. Is Spongebob autistic? Wow. Is Spongebob himself right, autistic? Right. As a and I said, yes, of course. I said, of course he is. And I said, I said, you know what? That's his superpower. The same way it's your superpower. Absolutely. You know, the same way it's Jenna's superpower. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The lava person has tweeted over and over again, apparently, that... They feel like the other person didn't do anything wrong. Destiny, to be fair, that's literally what you do with the constellation of beliefs. That's a pattern of thought that I've identified, but I'm always willing for people to break the pattern. I literally ask for disconfirming evidence all the fucking time. That's the difference. What are you talking about? I probably ask for disconfirming evidence more than any other individual person you know, but I never get good responses to it. Again, not to call out any particular person because I love all people. My heart is full of love, right? But, you know, when I saw Lex tweet out, oh, interesting, Lex is, oh, he deleted his post or he blocked me, fuck. When Lex, um, when Lex tweeted out his uh, thing about like, oh yeah, like the Democrats are all whatever, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm curious. Have you ever asked for Trump to publish his tax returns for him to testify before Congress about anything like Hillary had to? Or have you criticized Trump for dodging Nikki Haley for debate requests in the RNC? And then the response was nothing. It was like, oh, that's so mean that you would say that. I ask for disconfirming evidence all the fucking time. If you want to um, if you want to say that uh, I group people's beliefs together too much, I mean, I'm sure there are definitely times to make assumptions. I can't know every single person's belief about everything at all points in time, but I'm always open to people proving me wrong. And I say as much about it. So fuck you.
<laughs> oh my god. Oh, that might be the... Oh, that might be the whitest tweet I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't know if I've ever seen a statement more white before. No. <laughs> oh. Thinking of this image again today. So this is Ruby, the girl who, um, when they desegregated schools, who needed the police to walk her in. Ruby Bridges was six years old when she became the first black student to integrate an elementary school in the South in 1960. Kamala Harris was born in 1964 and went to school in Berkeley in Canada. What? Do you understand how crazy of a statement it is to say, like, don't you realize that schools were racially desegregated four whole years before you were born? <laughs> like, that's, that is an insane statement to make. <laughs> Jesus. It's not like your older siblings were forced into segregated education. That was just your parents. <laughs> uh. Okay. It also misses the point Ruby had to walk so that Kamala could run. Yeah, a little bit too, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, true, right? It's probably to show also how far you've come. Which, so, which his statement in a way can almost reinforce that. What is, what, how dumb, whatever, okay. God, I love being white. Oh, feels good. Feels good when I don't have to worry about any bullshit or anything, I can do whatever the fuck. I God, it feels good to be white. Yes. I would kill myself if I had to deal with white people saying shit like this. But I am white, so I don't give a fuck. It just rolls off the back. It rolls off the back. Oh!